Welcome to part two on how to create a, um, a web filter in NetOp for your students. So in the last video, I showed you how to turn on the Google part of the web filter and then to push out links to students. What you can do is actually create your own filter, and I would like to show you how to do that. There are a few steps involved, uh, but it is, <clears throat> pardon me, actually not that difficult. So the first step is to know where you want to get your information from. Okay, so um, define, say, your websites. So I found two sites here up at the top of Cheetahs. One's from National Geographic Kids, and the other one, well, it looks like it's National Geographic Kids, but it is, it's very different. So what I need to do is I'm first going to go into my Google Drive and create a new document. And I've done that, and it's empty. So that's fantastic. What I need to do now is copy and paste those URLs into the document. So I go to my first one, come up to the top, and I go to copy. So I've copied this URL. And then I'm going to come down into, I've gone back to my Google document, I'm just going to paste it. Okay, perfect. Make sure I hit enter, start another line. I'm gonna leave the space in between. I'm gonna come back to the other website, same thing. I'm going to click, copy. I could use um, control C, control V if I'd like to use the uh, commands or the shortcuts. And I'm going to paste this. So in this case, when I make my filter, I only want these two websites open to my students. So this file or this folder, uh, I'm going to come up, I'm going to call it Cheetah Links. Okay. Now this is the critical part. If you're working in Microsoft Word, you would just save the file. In um, Google, you don't ever really get a save option because it saves automatically. So in this case, I'm going to go to Download As, and I'm going to download this as a plain text file. It can't be a doc file. It can't be rich text format. can't be a PDF, not a web page. Not I don't want a Google file. I need a plain text file. If I was in Microsoft Word, I would do the same thing. I would go to Save As, and you have to save it as a plain text or just a text file. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I click on it here, and you're going to see it downloaded cheetahlinks.txt, which means it is a text file. So I've done that. Fantastic. I've created my file with my links in it. So next step, I go back into NetOp. So here I am in NetOp. Up at the top here, I'm going to click on the three dots and come down to Configure Web. So, I want to add now. Okay, here it says Add. I clicked on the plus and there's an Add New, which means I'm going to add a new filter that I've created. It's going to look at my computer and say, well, what did you make? See, here was my filter test I did before. This one was called Cheetah Links, I believe. And it'll be saved in my downloads. So let's go to Cheetah. Oh, I think I just went past it. Notice it's looking for a text file, and I don't have very many here. So it's actually easy to find. There's my Cheetah links, and look at them. It, it really is text. They're not actually links anymore, but that's fine. I click Open, and now it's added Cheetah links right here. So now when I want my students to um, go and do work on cheetahs, but I want only them to be able to access those two websites in Google, nothing else. I'm going to check these two boxes. This will allow them to get into all the Google apps and my two cheetah links, but that's it. When I hit apply, I've now created that filter. Now I'm gonna think of my student here. Right now it says everything is allowed. I don't want that. I'm gonna turn on the filter. Limited access is up again, which is great. So if my student tries to get into anything online, like YouTube and all that, it's not going to work. It's blocked. However, if I take now, I'm going to click on, push a link. Sorry, i got to close there. I do that all the time. i got to close their live view. Oh, there we go. I can actually push out that link about the cheetahs that I just put in there, and it'll be allowed because it's in my filter. See what it did? Because it was already in my filter, I've pushed it out to my student, and it's opened the website for them, ready to go. You're not wasting any time at all. So by having those links and creating that text file, 
and then just putting the text file in there and turning it on, my student, in this case, can now do research about the cheetah here. And which, what's great also is, yeah, I pushed it out to them, but they can use their read and write tools. Hopefully it's going to open for me. It's, my computer is lagging a little bit. There they are. So my student can go through, they can read through the article. If they need some assistance, they can use the read and write tools, which is fantastic. But if they try to open up another tab, this is what they get. No YouTube, no videos, no music. They're locked into everything Google that we use and then just the articles. Now, do they have those links that I put in my filter? No, they don't. But the way I gave them the link is I just pushed it out. So as a teacher, the other thing I could do, I want to push out another link so they have them both. But I can't remember what the link was. Problem. Click on my three dots. Come on back to configure filter. Here's my cheetah links. So if I click on it, there they are. So I didn't push this one out. I'm just going to copy it. Control C. Then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to push out that link to them. They'll have both of them. They'll have access to both of those sites and Google and nothing else. If you notice, I pushed it out in a second. His new screen, my student, is now the other website. So this will then give you more control over what the students can access. And if you notice, it didn't take that much time. Yeah, the first time you do it, like anything else, it's going to take a little extra time. But once you've done it once or twice, this is actually a very quick process. As long as you know the links that you want the students to have, you can limit your students to the work that they're supposed to be doing. One way that I have seen this used, and I'm going to be honest, I kind of, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, um, is say to them, okay, here's what's going to happen. For the first 25, 30 minutes, you're going to be unlimited access. Once you're into the work, maybe you've been working for a while, I'm going to give you 10 or 15 minutes without limited access afterwards so that, you know what, I can turn this off while they're engaged. And then if they want to listen to music a little bit after they've given me 15, 20 minutes of work, I'm showing faith in them that they can then introduce some music or something else into their work as opposed to it always being, I don't trust you and you can't ever earn this from me. The other thing that's great about this is if you have certain students that you know are fine and are able to handle this on their own, um, then don't don't put um, this restriction on them. If you have certain students that, because of um, behavior, need this restriction, that's great. Just select the five, six, eight, ten students that you require and turn this filter on. This should not be a, we do this to the whole class because two people have caused a problem. Make sure that just as you tailor your teaching and your curriculum, or well, not the curriculum, but your teaching strategies to your students, you should be using this as a tool not as a punishment for everyone. If you need any other assistance with this, please let the technology services department know. We would be happy to help you out. I hope this helps. I hope this becomes um, a tool that you use in your classroom almost daily. And uh, 